this is one of the reasons why I like Arizona so much. It hardly ever rains. It's been a miserable morning and, uh, well, it rained most of the night and now in the morning it's been on and off, but, you know, I had to check out by 11.30. It's 11.18, I didn't want to overstay my, my stay there, so, yeah, everything is full of wet sand in my cargo bay down there, you know, this, it gets everywhere. Anyways, off to Florida we go. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be. Because I'm free in my RV. I was going to pass by Pensacola just to see it. I've never actually been there, but with this weather, I've changed my mind. Two oh nine per gallon, so might as well take advantage of that uh, inexpensive Alabama gas before we hit Florida. Black Water Bridge, use caution. You know, there's no point in, in driving like this. So I think I'm just gonna stop at the next uh, rest area or whatever I can. I'm just gonna wait it out. take a break here at the rest area and wait the storm out. Yes, I'm going to catch up on some video editing. The weather has improved significantly, so I'm going to make a run for it and uh, try to make it to Tallahassee, near the Tallahassee area. Today, I, whew, I, uh, I worked for a couple of hours, slept an, uh, an hour or two, <laughs> and then um, prepared me some lunch that I didn't show you, but I made one of those frozen. In a quarter mile, merge onto I-10 East. Well, it looks like I caught up with the rain. And now it's even worse. The problem is the storm is moving east, and so am I, traveling together with this band of bad weather. Yep, it was a dark and stormy night. Eventually, I decide to overnight at the Walmart Supercenter in Chipley, Florida, just north of Panama City. Perhaps tomorrow we can snoop around a little bit. With all these torrential rains, there's only one thing to do. We're gonna edit some videos. Whoa. It's really bad. So we're gonna cook something real quick here. I've been itching to have a bean burrito. Mmm, bean burrito. Let's start with some olive oil. And I've got this frozen sofrito mix, which is basically onions and peppers salt and pepper and I'm going to open a can of beans black beans yeah, it's, got some, it's got red peppers uh, green peppers and onions it's a mix and as soon as that's uh, more or less it starts to, to, to cook I'm gonna put the black beans and some other condiments I'll show you the black beans with all the liquid and everything you know because that's the flavor one of my signature ingredients I'm gonna add a little bit of golden cooking wine I wish I wish this this Atwood ranges would produce more heat but this what is 
Let's add some paprika because I put paprika in everything. And main ingredient here is cumin. It needs to have a lot of cumin. To be considered the Cuban style of black beans. And of course a bit of oregano. And since I didn't use any garlic, let's put a tiny little bit of garlic powder. Just a tiny little bit. Listen to that rain. I'm gonna put a tiny little bit of uh, tomato sauce. A little bit of shirasha because why not? Mm. Let it cool off now. Well, this is the second one. I forgot to show you the first one. It's a little bit messy, but delicious. Okay, here's the plan. <clears throat> We're gonna go down to Panama City, Mexico Beach, Apalachicola, and Carabel. Actually, I might skip Panama, Panama City. We'll see. But I wanna hope that, you know, I've been to Panama City Beach just driving, not actually being there. And um, I've been to Panama City Beach, kind of. But I've, I've, I've always wanted to, to, um, to explore that. It's kind of like a peninsula in the, in the, uh, in the, the, the Florida Panhandle, where Mexico uh, Beach is located and Carabel, Apalachicola, that area. So it's supposed to rain, but I'm going to do it anyways. I, hopefully they're wrong and it stops raining by the time I get there. From here to Mexico Beach should be about an hour and a half. It looks really close on the map, but I guess it is further than it looks and it's all uh, like like secondary roads, blue highways. So on the road again, this is the penultimate day on the road here. Oh shoot, I just noticed that sign. Okay. <laughs> See that? They had a huge no overnight uh, parking sign. I didn't see it. And I saw that there were like five RVs in the parking lot. So I guess they're not really enforcing it, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Yay, blue skies. There is hope. As soon as you start driving south, you start seeing signs everywhere that something terrible happened here recently. Earlier, it was just a random leaning street sign or out of place pile of rubble. But now, more and more, there's evidence of the destruction caused by Hurricane Michael, which made landfall in Mexico Beach on October 10th, 2018. All of a sudden, it's rubble all over the place and fallen trees and check out this gas station coming up he lost part of the roof yeah it's Yep, everywhere you look, there is something damaged or destroyed. As we approach the coast, the severity of the damage becomes more and more dramatic and more widespread. The images heartbreaking, even for some of us who are somewhat accustomed to hurricanes. There is no doubt 
that this was a major one, one for the history books. It is like 90% of these trees just snapped with the wind. And something tells me that this is still the weaker side of the hurricane because the wind is coming inland. That's inland, that's the water. So at some point we're gonna see the changing of the winds, the evidence of the changing of the winds in, in, the, in the damage. Well, yeah, I kind of misspoke. I meant the wind is coming from the land into the water. Still, the western weaker side of the storm. The eastern part of the storm will be the one with the stronger winds coming from the Gulf. Even more damage due to storm surge. This is the zone where the wind changed because the direction of the, 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 the leaning of the trees is now to the left or in the northeast. This must have been the eye of the storm around here. Well, here we are, Mexico Beach. Mexico Beach was ground zero. Here, the eye wall of the storm made landfall, and it shows. I'll let the images speak for themselves. I'm just gonna stop here real quick, catch my breath, because the level of destruction it's like nothing I've ever seen before. Granted, a lot of these are wooden structures, probably not built to withstand a hurricane of this magnitude, but still. Here's the view from the roof of the trailer. It is staggering. You see, these structures here coming up fared much better. Better built, perhaps? Some are actually concrete structures. This part of Florida here and the areas coming up are called the Forgotten Coast. And it seems like these people have been forgotten by the media. Nothing has been said about the recovery or how long it will take. I have, I have never seen anything like this. The whole area is like completely rubbleized. Zone. I mean, not even in Andrew, in Miami, but not even Irma in the Keys. This is incredible. The next town is Port St. Joe. A little bit of damage here too, but much less. Some houses, <coughs> some houses survived pretty well, but others didn't.
now approaching Apalachicola. The main attraction here seems to be the excellent seafood. But first, I'm going to take a break here under this bridge. There's again what seems to be some hurricane damage on that sailboat. Let's continue. Still got a long way ahead of me today. As we depart here, Apalachicola. Yeah, the truck thinks I am about to hit something because the, the rear parking sensor sensors the trailer. I mean, sensors, not senses. Got all these crazy birds here. They're not afraid, huh? Oh, check that out. <laughs> You know what those are? Oysters. Because this is called the Oyster Republic. Take the next left onto Avenue D, then your destination will be on the right. Yeah, I put some random destination there to come to this area, but check out this expedition vehicle. That's what we need to travel the world. Uh, maybe something a tiny little bit smaller, but yeah. Let me tell you, I kinda wish I was hungry because I really love seafood. I still haven't acquired quite a taste for raw oysters, maybe one of these days, but I'll pretty much go for anything else. Is that bug on my windshield uh, bugging you? And this would be the bridge spanning the Apalachicola River. Here on US 98, also called the Big Bend Scenic Byway Coastal Trail. Yeah, it is a mouthful. I guess we could make a quick detour here to the right to St. George's Island, but I want to continue on to the east coast of Florida. And why the rush, you might ask? You might say, Robert, you're always in a rush. And many times I am, I'll admit it. This time, however, I have a reason. I have a rocket launch to attend at the Kennedy Space Center in two days. There's some road construction here and there on the horizon. You can barely see it. That's St. George's Island, the barrier island I was talking about, where the beaches are. There's a beach here too as we approach Carabel, which is also famous for the excellent seafood. Although, I want to see something else. Let's park right here. Well, here we are, Carabel, Florida, one of those places that very few people really know about, and this is some kind of memorial here. It is called Veterans Park, fairly new, and it honors local veterans who served our country. All right, let's check out the smallest police station in the world and then off we go. Oh, and that's the city clock as well. Looks like it's gonna start raining any second now. Yeah, the weather has been kind of strange today. We went from rainy to sunny and now it's going to be rainy again. And here's what Carabels is most famous for. It is the world's smallest police station, right here in 
Carabelle, Florida, I guess it uh, consists of this bench. And I guess if there is trouble, I guess in, apparently in yesteryear you would walk. They have an explanation. I guess you would, the policeman would walk in here and go for, for, for backup or help or anything like that. Well, anyways, I'm gonna read this and get the history. Yeah, apparently this was originally like on the side of a building and uh, since it rains so much here, eventually they created this little, you know, phone booth so the, the, the policeman could uh, like report troubles and stuff. Pretty cool. Let's check on Minitini. Yep, still there. There doesn't seem to be a whole lot going on here in Carabel, which, by the way, is really out of the way. If you come here, it's because you wanna come here. Look at all the oysters on the pavement, here on the pavement, on the ground. And if you're wondering what the rush is all about, uh, this is just an overview trip that I'm doing here in the in this area, just to find out if it is worth it to return here at some point. Uh, and I think we will. I think we will. Sometime with more time. But I, I you know, I, I, before before two years ago or something like that, I had never heard of this area of Florida. It's like the Forgotten Coast, like they say. Check it out. An Itasca spirit going by. Let's go. If I want to make it to Cape Canaveral by, month, by tomorrow, this, around this time, I have to keep moving. Well, I haven't done any research on this area really i just knew it existed and uh, had seen some videos on youtube of all places actually from actually from from head southeast on us 390 north us 98 east toward northwest second street from lydia simply rving and from from lewis rolling earth ship uh, but uh, that, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot going on here in, in carbell but i will return Someday. Someday. The thing is, I it, it's a it's a little bit of a detour, and I didn't know how much of a detour it really is. I mean, it it really takes you out of the beaten path, and uh, and I'm still uh, many many hours away from from my destination for tomorrow, which is going to be the last thing we're going to do on this trip, which is watch the the SpaceX rocket launch from Cape Canaveral. So 14.2 average mileage on this um, slower roads, US 98 here. Oh, my mom's name is Alma. Maybe I'll send her a picture. What's up with all this fog all of a sudden? Ooh. Night falls. We cross the Suwani River, and I am going to sleep at the Walmart here at this small town called Chiefland. This freaking storm is traveling south with me. So it's gonna rain overnight here. Again. Hold on. Uh, let my, uh, I had left my water on the table. Well, anyways, we are almost on the home stretch here. Let me turn on my tire pressure monitoring system. And uh, I seem to, the, the, um, 
the bad weather seems to be chasing after me. Uh, actually, it could be me chasing after the bad weather. I have wheels after all, and, uh, and I could have planned better. All right, we're taking US 27 towards Ocala. You know, I've never been there. As I said yesterday, I am on US Route 27. So um, if I continue on 27, actually this is 27 and 41 at the same time. So however they bifurcate. <laughs> if I continue on 27, I end up at Okeechobee Road in Hialeah, Florida. If I continue on 41, I end up at the Tam Miami Trail and enter Miami through the West. If I were to continue on this uh, route, which I'm not. Look, horses coming up. Well, hello there. Just went under I-75. Been through that I-75 overpass so many times. And um, never stopped in this area, so. This is uh, pretty much Ocala, I think. A No idea what I'm going to do here, but I'd at least drive through downtown or something. See, it's supposed to be part of the historic downtown Ocala. If I can find two adjacent parking spaces, we're in business. All right. This is perfect. I decide to keep going after a quick break. You know what? That very well could have been me. I guess luck is on my side today, and I really do hope there were no major injuries. You know, that could have been me. So, um, you never know when, when a crash might happen. Moving on. I'm having lunch with Eric, fellow Pelican head, this traveler on YouTube and longtime viewer and friend at this place called Culver's in Castlebury, Florida. I'm riding, riding in my RV, wherever I I'm free in my RV. You think I'm becoming a perfectionist at parking the trailer? Anyways, there he is. My RV, wherever I want to be. Because I'm free. Uh, no matter how much I try to get away, the storm chases after me. It looks like I might be able to outrun the storm after all. Eventually, I arrive at my mooch docking spot for the night, at Bob and Cheryl's house. Remember them from the beginning of this trip? We had a wonderful dinner at this place called Squid Lips in Melbourne, but I took the night off from filming, so there's no video. In the morning, I woke up to the bad news that the rocket launch had been scrapped. 
So I decided to return to Miami, as I was anxious to get back home, and vowed to return on the next day, when the rocket launch had been rescheduled. Well, I don't know if you've heard, but they canceled the rocket launch. Uh, well, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm returning back to Miami. But the launch is going tomorrow at the same time, so I might make it a day trip. It's a three-hour drive. We shall see. I'll let you know tomorrow. It is almost a three-hour drive, but for a rocket launch, I think it is worth it. I'm riding, riding in my RV, wherever I Cause I'm free in my RV Yeah, I'm riding Riding, riding I'm riding in my RV My RV Wherever I want to be Cause I'm free in my RV Yeah Because I'm free in my RV, yeah, riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be. Because I'm free. Yeah. Break it down. Riding, riding, oh, riding in my RV, my RV, wherever. taking the dreaded turnpike which as you know I don't really like to take but in this case it's justifiable I want to get there on time I don't want to be late for this and the turnpike yeah it's a couple of minutes faster and, um, and I forget to have breakfast so I might be able to, to go to the service plaza and just grab something real quick I arrive three hours later and soon after we depart towards Cape Canaveral which is an extra hour drive I'm going with Bob and Cheryl and their daughter Jenny and her husband Omar, who happens to be of Cuban descent, like me. Anyways, Jenny works at the Kennedy Space Center, so we are getting the VIP treatment here. There's the VAB, which stands for Vehicle Assembly Building. It is actually a lot larger than it looks from far away. And it is actually one of the largest buildings in the world when it comes to volume and the largest single-story building in the whole world. It is 526 feet tall. So inside the VAB is the um, mobile launcher. The mobile launcher is what's going to bring the vehicle out to the pad and launch off of. So whenever you hear the mobile launcher, it's in, right now it's in the VAB, but it crawls on the crawler over to the pad. They got a detail. And then you can see where the... And you can see each platform that they work on each floor. You can count how many platforms on just mm -hmm. that bay alone, and that's not the full building. Well. But when you go on the bus tour, it takes you into the LCC and you get to walk through some of the firing groups. Let's go on to the causeway to witness the main event here. Well, here we are. It's kind of windy, but there we have the VAB. And if we look to the right, that's our 
rocket right there. Thank you, Jenny. You're welcome. Well, here we are, and I hope you can hear me because it is kind of crazy. This is Jenny, Omar, Bob, Cheryl. Here we are waiting for. for Wait, that's not it. Let me tell you, not as many people as I expected. It's D minus five. <laughs> Free falling. Yep. Yeah. Well, if you notice, it does fall over after it lands, and the thing is, it landed on the water, not where it was supposed to. I mean, still, I think it's amazing technology, it's able to land itself at all. Well, definitely worth the three-hour drive, let me tell you. Actually, the landing was almost as impressive, if not more impressive, than the takeoff. That was really cool. Amazing technology. Amazing technology.